Hello everyone. Today I'm going to cover part four of chapter 10, Early Childhood Psychosocial Development. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about how we develop a sense of gender in the early childhood years. So we know that there are biological differences between males and females um, across all different aspects of being a human being. Those differences um, biologically are noted in various organs, uh, in our hormones, in our body shape, and even in uh, parts of the brain that are allocated more or less uh, resources. There are also gender differences which are not biologically driven, but are culturally or experientially determined. So think of sex as a biological term, gender is a cultural term. And gender differences are differences in the roles and behaviors that a particular culture has in mind for males and females. Now at age two, children are well aware as to whether or not they are biological boys or girls, and they usually apply these labels consistently. By age four, they can become convinced that certain toys like dolls or trucks are appropriate only for one gender but not for the other. And uh, this kind of rule governed thinking is characteristic of what Piaget would discuss in the pre-operational stage of thinking. As gender differences become more obvious to young children, you may see an increased awareness of how a person's biological background and their preferences, behaviors, or roles could differ. That there may be um, an inconsistency or a difference between sex and gender within an individual. However, by about the age of eight, most children believe that their biological sex is a permanent or consistent trait. From the age of two to the age of eight, the awareness of sex differences increases and we start to see an increasing preference for same-sex playmates and stereotypical activities in uh, gender play tends to increase. And this is regardless of whether or not the adults in the child's life have been trying to uh, expose a child to play um, that is associated with the other sex or not. It seems to be a general developmental progression for most young children in American culture today. Now there are many theories about uh, gender development. The psychoanalytic theory being one of the most influential uh, in this in the last century in the United States. Psychoanalytic thinking comes from the work of Freud and other analysts where they suggest that um, the stages of development that are characterized by different sexual stages is where our ideas about gender develop. So Freud uh, suggested that the phallic stage, which is the third stage of development, is when the penis becomes the focus of concern and pleasure for males. At that same stage, Freud suggested that females are jealous of the penis and um, therefore wish that they had one of those um, and may actually get stuck and frustrated if they don't grow out of that conflict. Freud also discusses how in the early childhood years children have an ongoing conflict where the thought by Freud is that a young boy wishes to kill his father and marry his mother whereas a young girl in the Electra complex is thought to want to kill her mother and marry her father. So Freud suggests that these are deep-seated sexually driven uh, conflicts that young children try to resolve and as they do they may prefer interacting with one parent over the other and that this behavior reflects these deep-seated conflicts that we all have subconsciously. Freud also suggests that we develop our ideas about gender because of um, the superego which is to Freud your personality is made up of three components there's the id which is um, the part of you that acts impulsively to do whatever you want, whenever you want. There's the ego, which is like the parent of the brain or the personality. This is the one that goes for balance and tries to help you um, 
maybe quell the impulses of the id, but also balance um, being overly rigid or overly rule governed, which is where the super ego comes into play. So the id is impulsive, the ego is for balance, and the super ego is that judgmental part of the personality that is internalizing the moral standards of the culture, and an overactive super ego is thought to be associated with uh, feelings of shame or guilt as the child is trying to navigate this early psychosocial conflict. Now, not everybody believes that Freud's ideas hold up. In fact, this idea that um, the Oedipal complex, the Electra complex, that's been pretty much debunked by theorists since that time. In addition, um, people who study Freud and his work have discovered that he fictionalized some aspects of his case studies and some of his more compelling ideas are actually based on um, non-factual accounts of his clinical cases. One of the theories of gender development that arose from psychoanalytic thinking that continues to have credibility today is this idea of identification, which is that as a child between the ages of three and six is developing a sense of themselves or their self-concept, they will often identify more with one parent over another. That may be because their relationship is strong with that parent, but it can actually be because they don't see enough of that parent, that the parent that they actually have a stronger relationship with, they interact more often with, becomes kind of taken for granted. And the parent that they see less often may become a bit more interesting or alluring, and the young child may identify more with that parent. In any case, as a child identifies or connects their sense of self with a parent, they can often take on or imitate the behaviors, attitudes, and responses of that parent. If the parent that a young child identifies with is a match for the biological sex, you may get a child who behaves in gender ways that are pretty conforming to the rules of that gender in that culture. If on the other hand, you have a young child who identifies with a parent of the opposite sex, you may get a young girl who others describe as a tomboy, a girl who um, understands that she is biologically female but prefers the activities and the play and some of the um, cultural aspects of behaving in a more male-like manner. So identification is thought to be important in psychosocial development for children. It's also important to keep in mind that it's pretty common for a young child to identify with one adult for a time period and then shift that allegiance and identify with another adult at another period, thus kind of taking or imitating behaviors of different adults and making them part of his or her personality. Now, other uh, theor theoretical movements have different ideas about how ideas about gender evolve. Psychoanalytic thinking is not particularly well accepted in uh, the United States. However, it is a, a driving force in how people think about gender in France, for example. Behaviorists have a very different idea about how um, our conception of gender evolves. And the behavioral way of thinking um, probably characterizes um, the Western view a bit more coherently, one might say, than the Freudian view did. To a behaviorist, gender differences are produced by which behaviors are reinforced or rewarded and which ones are either ignored or punished. So in other words, behaviorists suggest that boys learn how to behave as people expect boys will behave because they get reinforced for their sort of boy play and boy um, culturally accepted boy play. Um, and they get maybe ignored or even uh, shamed if they play in a manner that is less closely tied to their biological sex and the cultural ideas about what a boy ought to do. Um, so to a behaviorist, the differences that we see in ideas about gender in young children are learned through reinforcement and punishment. Those behaviors that are seen as, quote, gender appropriate, in other words, something that is consonant or similar, if a child is biologically female and the adults around the child expect um, more 
uh, culturally stereotypic female play that would be described as gender appropriate and that consonance tends to be rewarded more often by adults um, particularly older adults who may have their own strong ideas about differences between males and females cognitive theorists uh, think similarly to behaviorists that that ideas about gender are not biologically driven as much as they are learned culturally um, but they have uh, an idea that suggests that what children are doing in the early childhood years is gathering some evidence through their experience and creating what they call a gender schema a gender schema tends to emerge by about the age of five, and this reflects a child's cognitive concept or their overall beliefs about what it means to be male or female. It usually is a combination of observations and experiences, but often can reflect the attitudes and beliefs of the adults around the child, as well as the media that the child may be exposed to. Young children often categorize themselves as either male or female and then tend to um, act in a way that's consistent with that. That sort of logical connection that you'll see in young children can change as their thinking gets more sophisticated. But as you may recall, in Piaget's ideas about pre-operational thinking, the sense that things are static, in other words, that they won't change and that they are irreversible, they're always going to be this way, those sorts of Piagetian concepts really characterize how the young child reasons. And thus, a young child's ideas about what it means to be a boy or a girl are likely more rigid and rule-governed than they will be when the child reaches middle childhood or adolescence. There are also sociocultural theories about how we develop ideas about gender. And these would be rooted in um, like Vygotsky kind of thinking or even from um, Bonfenbrenner and other people who think about the broader culture and its influences on children. In this theory, how the broader culture thinks about males, females, is going to have a strong influence on the child. And that the more that norms and preferences of a big culture changes, the more that um, gender ideas about gender will change for children in that culture. So to a sociocultural theorist, these things are not necessarily intentionally conveyed or taught to children, but are just sort of um, assumed to grow because the child is immersed in the culture. And then lastly, there's an evolutionary theory about uh, gender development, which suggests that the species of human beings can survive if there is ongoing reproduction or continuation of the species, and that ongoing reproduction is directly related to maintaining um, sexual passion and drives to reproduce, and that gender-related differences evolve in order to create the opportunity for the sexual passion to be in play and for the ongoing biological urges to occur, thus leading to uh, continuation of the species. So there's a lot of assumptions in this evolutionary theory. Um, the idea that passion is increased by uh, differences between two individuals is controversial. There is a thought that um, sexual passion is not related to um, being more different one from the other, but is actually a highly individualized sort of experience that's influenced by many, many different factors. So evolutionary theory has some credence in contemporary culture, but there are also limits to the theory um, based on the idea that there has not yet been uh, specific biological evidence that ties gender-related behavior to their genetic underpinnings. So which theory of gender development is best? Well, it really uh, depends on your interpretation of the research. Theories are designed so that people can test them and can um, hopefully add to the knowledge, which will then in turn alter the theories. Uh, each of the major, major developmental theories we've talked about tries to explain why young children express the thoughts and feelings that they do about gender. Some of these theories are 
emphasizing more biological factors and others stress the impact of culture. While no consensus has been reached, the overall findings from the research suggest that the psychoanalytic theory probably doesn't hold up, but that the behaviorist, cognitive, sociocultural theories are probably um, most accepted in contemporary Western culture. Evolution is definitely um, considered to be an important part of it, but scientists differ on how far they're willing to interpret the biological evidence to determine that um, sex differences, gender differences, are actually driven by genes more than they are by experience. So in summary, um, Early childhood is a period for developing ideas about what it means to be male or female. Young children tend to be more rule governed and uh, deterministic or specific about their ideas about boys and girls and those ideas often um, evolve over time to be more sophisticated, less static, and less irreversible. So that concludes our section on Chapter 10, Psychosocial Development in Early Childhood. I hope that these lectures are coming across okay using uh, this audio program. Um, do encourage you to review the key terms and the main ideas at the back of each chapter. Once you have either listened to each chapter and lecture or read them, you're probably ready for exam three which will be posted um, by the end of April 10th and will be available um, for about, uh, oh gosh, I'm not going to say the date now. Please check the front page of the Canvas course and you'll see. I believe you have uh, two weeks from the 10th to complete the exam. Thank you for your time and attention.